Welcome, adventurers. Today we're going to finish the backside of the basalt uh, columnar cliffs that we made last time. To do that, we're going to go to the hardware store. Shop towels, check. Alright, sponges. Ooh, because, you know, sponges. A new spray bottle. Not that spray bottle. Uh, that one. Super glow. Plaster of Paris. The wrong caulk. Storage totes. Magnets. The wrong cellulose fiber. Now that we have mostly the right and some of the wrong materials, let's get started. Taking your wrong caulk, you're going to load it into your caulk gun and you're going to lay out nice thin beads of it to make what looks like a waterfall that's laying down. Use some isopropyl alcohol, paintbrush, smooth it all out, and let it dry. While it's drying, take some aluminum foil, I'm going to wad it up here to make an uneven texture. Set it to the side so that you can make something that's the consistency of very runny pancake batter. Plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris first. Water. Mix. More Plaster of Paris. Mix. More Plaster of Paris. Mix. And runny pancake batter we got. Now we're going to take our mold. And I like to spray mine with a bit of water because I feel that it helps it actually run into all the little nooks and crannies first when you're pouring it in because it's a water-based mixture. Water, you know, I don't know if it actually helps, but I think it does. Spread it out, like so. Give it a little shake, and move that to dry. Now while it dries, kick the project that you're working on, like that, so that you can repair that later. Important step. Now use your scraps to play Tetris for a while to figure out how you want all the pieces to go together. And once you figure that out, lay them out. Yep, liking how that looks. Start figuring everything else out. Now this Pringles can. This is a trick that I learned from Eric's Hobby Workshop. You take some packing brown tape and wrap it around the Pringles can that you've cut because it hides that spiral pattern and it actually takes paint better than the texture on the tube itself. Once that, we have some sort of sewer water drain pipe thingy. And we glue that in place and we're going to build up our walls around it to build up a wall. Now we're going to make a connecting thing here so it's going to be a template to make sure that if I expand upon this in the future with a river I want to make sure I do it the same way so I'm going to make a template making spots for where I can poke holes through for magnet attachment because modularity and magnets go together because of alliteration. So this is the river front template front river template front yeah that's the thing and it works like this magic now we got a place to put magnets. Speaking of magnets, there's a north and a south side. Now, that's arbitrary. Pick an end, color it so you know what it is. Pick the other end to make it the opposite end. For me, uh, south is silver, north is sharpie. And it's that simple. You also want to seal it in the top with a little bit of hot glue as well. You'll see here in just a second that I have north and south and south and north. So when you turn it around, it'll actually connect. Now I'm going to bevel this like I've done in previous videos and then get a satisfying magnetic snap there. Now this is going to be kind of a pond at the end of my waterfall. So I'm going to bulk out the walls with a bit of styrofoam. Now let's check on our rocks. I'm pretty proud of the way these turned out. That being said, I ordered rock molds because they don't look as much like rocks as I'd like them to look. So with my not rocky rocks, I'm going to glue them in place with some well, construction adhesive, plaster and construction adhesive go together well. And here you go. And, uh, hmm. While I find that, you should take this time to uh, like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to see when I make my next big mistake, which is soon. So, I'm going to make bad homemade sculpt mold. And I'm going to do that with plaster of Paris and paper pulp and water. This paper pulp is blow-in insulation, but it doesn't break down as well as I was hoping it would, even though it's paper pulp and it's got some weird colored bits in it and stuff. But basically make tuna fish out of these components. One-to-one -one for plaster and paper pulp, water until it's tuna fish, and plaster it all over your project and let it dry for, like, you know, forever. Now, my waterfall. 
watch it come to the uh, let me find a place to uh, damn it so silicone caulk and parchment paper which is infused with silicone apparently bond to one another I uh yeah I didn't realize that so into the trash it goes acrylic caulk repeat the steps from previous and let dry so let's sculpt them all dry here Use a weird lumpy texture. Not happy with that, especially on the rock cliff. Since it's supposed to be rocky, I don't want it to look like kind of packed mud. So, we're going to go back to elementary school and do a little paper mache. Fortunately, I've got plaster of Paris and tissues and water. I mean, that's pretty much all it is. But you put that on there, there's a very old trick to make rocks. Kind of smoosh it around so that it looks rocky. Now while that dries, again, we're going to get our dyes ready for leopard spotting. Leopard spotting is an old technique from railroad modeling to make really realistic looking rocks. I have never done it before and I'm therefore not good at it. But I've seen some amazing results on other channels. So this place here is this bluish green area where water will be ultimately. Since it soaks into the plaster, it stains. And that's what you're looking for. And there's no rhyme or reason to these colors, the yellow, the brown, the orange. They just kind of go various places. And then there's a complete overwash of black at the very end. This is mostly kind of like a pond. So I stuck with just the brown and the orange to make it look like earth and wet earth. And now, poof. It's completely stained. Except for this one spot here. And we're going to do the same thing over here and make a match. Once it's all dried in, we're going to give it a protective coat of matte varnish. Now that our acrylic caulk has dried, watch it peel off of the parchment like I intended through the first time. Voila! Waterfall. In fact, I made three various sizes. I'm going to figure out how I want to put these on here. Get my materials ready. Trim here. Super glue. Accelerant. Bada bing. Trim there. A little super glue. A little accelerant. And now we have a waterfall. Which I think turned out pretty well. Another little waterfall there. And then some fluid coming out of this pipe thing. I'm not going to attach it because, as you can see there, I needed to rust it. After I made that rusty, which there will be a card up at the top of the screen somewhere, I uh, proceed to make another mistake. Now, acrylic caulk, since it is white and turns clear, uh, if you put it on too thickly, it takes weeks to fully cure on the inside, meaning it will look white for a long, long time. Not very useful for a video that I'm trying to get done in a week. Unfortunately, I forgot this, having used acrylic caulk, I don't know how many times in my life. So I feel really silly right about now. But learn from my mistakes. If you want to do this technique, which you're welcome to do, thin layers. They'll dry faster. Less than a quarter inch. They'll dry in just a few hours. Come back and put another layer on. Then a few hours later, etc., etc. Don't just cake it on like I did, like I was, I don't know, trying to fill in you know, a massive gap or something with stuff that doesn't matter. Uh, I wanted this to be clear, and ultimately, it isn't. Very disappointing. I have to redo a fair amount of work here in a little bit. But the thin parts look awesome. So if you've got a dog, you probably have a broken dog toy. And that broken dog toy may have some fluff in it, like this. And in this fluff, it makes actually pretty convincing mist at the bottom of a waterfall. Now, keep in mind, it's been a few hours, and that stuff is still white. I should have realized it then. should have cleaned it up when I had the chance, but I didn't. Nope. I carry on, optimistically, knowing that, well, it'll dry clear. Everything else dried clear. Look at the waterfall. It's clear. Oy. Well, there you go. That's a midway point on this project. Now it's for liquid effects. So I'm going to make a little dam here with tape and silicone caulk because I had the plan of using this uh, leftover clear resin I have for my 3D printer and uh, 
Well, wait till you see how that turns out. I mean, the dam worked really well, unfortunately. Uh, that was the only thing that worked really well in this particular step. And it's thin, so it will definitely dry quickly. But the rest of it, many, many, many hours later, didn't. So, through to pruner resin, pop bubbles, apply UV light, drain out excess that didn't cure underneath, and blindly charge ahead with uh, water effects. And there you go. Still white, chunky, weird bits. Uh, a strange, hollow, bubbly looking, I don't know what to call that. So, let's fix our mistake. Rip it all out. Restain it several places. Clean up any excess resin. Coat of matte Mod Podge to glue pieces back into place that had come out and protect the edges. Make a new dam with hot glue and a piece of clear plastic this time. Because we're going to do a resin pour. Uh, like a two part resin pour. You know, JB Weld, like part A, part B. But right here, you get to watch it cure, which is really cool in a not very exciting way. And you're literally watching resin dry here. But you can watch the crystalline shapes form right across the surface through this section. I liked it. But in literally five minutes, it is clear, full of bubbles, but clear, and uh, solid as a rock. Also hot. And there you go. Like kind of an overall shot. I painted a little uh, dye onto the waterfall because I wanted things that look like there was something wrong with this water. It's a greenish color. Kind of a tealy green. It's weird. The rocks turned out really well, I think. And there's a good kind of long action shot of it. Something for Tiny and the boys to definitely fight over at some point. Well, thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.